Hi everyone, welcome back to our show, To That Point. As you know, we cover topics at the intersection of business and culture, and we've spent the past few weeks speaking to friends about their experiences in grad school during a pandemic. Within each theme, we're hoping to spotlight a few local businesses we think you should know about. With any grad school program, you'll get a list of required reading, and we think you should add a few books from Harriet's Bookshop to that list. Today, we have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Janine Cook, owner of Harriet's Bookshop in Philly. If you haven't heard of Harriet's, it's an indie bookstore in the Fishtown neighborhood of Philly, named after the historic heroine Harriet Tubman, dedicated to raising the voices of women authors, artists, and activists. A few headlines written about the bookshop include, Harriet's Bookshop in Fishtown thriving during pandemic due to a unique mission. Indie bookshop dedicated to Harriet Tubman sparks conversation on the sidewalk. Harriet's Bookshop owner hands out free books about Black leaders during Philly marches. And Harriet's Bookshop in Fishtown, a space of peace for people in a chaotic world. The owner, Janine, is a writer and educator. She attended the University of the Arts in Philadelphia and has utilized her passion for arts and academics throughout her many endeavors. Yes, we're so excited to speak with you today, Janine. Montana and I, as we've mentioned, are very happy customers. We both just finished The Warmth of Other Suns, which was a beautiful story. And we're going to be ordering another book from your shop soon. Your press coverage and accolades are very impressive, and we're looking forward to hearing more about Harriet's from the founder. But before we start, what we like to do with our interviews is ask a few questions. They're icebreakers. They're not specific to the topic we're going to be discussing today. They're just intended to help us get to know you a little bit better. So it's rapid fire style. All you have to do is answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. So the first question is, what do you drink while you're reading? I drink a frozen iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts with a shot of coconut and a shot of caramel. No whipped cream. (laughs) (laughs) That is a custom order, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) All right. What's your favorite season? My favorite season is the season when I'm alive. I don't have a favorite season. Mm, That's a beautiful (laughs) answer, though. It's always a good time to be alive. Man, I tell you, because we could not be. So I have have a lot of gratitude for all of the seasons. When I was in Africa, the seasons were totally different, right? And so, you know, there was a rainy season and a dry season. And, you know, it just depends. Yeah. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, superpower. I would like to have some osmosis where I can understand what's going on in people's minds without them having to share it out loud through their voices. If you had the choice and you have travel plans, would you rather travel by train or by plane? Oh, train. All day train. Mm-hmm. I love watching things pass by in the window. (laughs) Yes, me too. And I I also, I feel like I have a metal plate in my head when I'm on a plane. When it's time to land, I get this feeling in my head. So I was like, I'll avoid that at all costs. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And the last question is in honor of Halloween, which is coming up. Do you prefer horror movies or comedy movies? I prefer any movie that keeps me awake. I, I struggle with staying awake <laughs> for movies. So <laughs> if it keeps me awake, I'm, I'm rocking with it. Awesome. So to kick us off, we would love to hear your take on what inspired you to open Harriet's Bookshop and why did you decide to name it after Harriet Tubman? So what inspired me to open the bookshop, I think it's, it's a culmination of things, right? I, I think looking at the current moment and reflecting now even more on what I thought was the current moment then and recognizing that I think one way for people to become more empathetic and more, I think, strong, honestly, is through literature, through books. And so I've thought that my whole, like, as long as I've been able to read, and I think that it's a great place for people to come together. I think, you know, it provides us with an opportunity to healthily debate and not necessarily agree, but find perspective from one another. Uh, And so I I figured a bookshop was a really great place for that. And I I say a lot of times Harriet's Bookshop is a bookshop, but it's it's also, you know, a whole lot more than just a bookshop. Because for me, it's really important that people use this space and place as an opportunity for dialogue. And for some of the things we don't, you know, society doesn't provide spaces for us to necessarily, like, say, 
talk about, you know, our political differences or to talk about our ethical differences. There's no space for that. And so my hope is that Harry's Bookshop gets to be a space for that. Right. And that's so, so important, Uh, even more so every single day, it, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, folks are not, uh, folks don't necessarily agree and we don't have to agree. But then my noticing is that we also aren't talking about those things we disagree about, right? Like in the only times where we do is like on social media where there's name calling and weird underhanded shots at one another, right? And that's not actually pushing us forward as a society in any way. Why did you name it after Harriet Tubman? Oh, yeah, I can't, I couldn't think of anybody that I found more powerful, more human and yet beyond human, right? Like, so Harriet Tubman, for me, is one of those people who at five foot tall did things that people today still can't think and figure out how she did it. And I think she's one of those women, especially Black women, who represent what I think we could be looking towards in ourselves and in in each other, right? Somebody who's willing to be a humanitarian, somebody who's willing to fight for other people's freedom along with their own, somebody who's willing not to necessarily be in the limelight, but be doing the work, somebody who's willing to do a lot of different jobs to get the agenda done, right? I think Harriet Tubman is just, she represents so much and did it a lot of things alone. I was reading a quote by her the other day that almost moved me to tears. Actually, it did. And she talks about when she got to the to Philadelphia and she made her way to this free land. And then, you know, she was laying on the cold, hard floor, the ground and was just like, I'm alone. I am all alone. And all she could do was pray and thank God for the fact that at least she had God. And that was just, just so powerful to me to do all that work, to, to get yourself to freedom and then find yourself in this deep aloneness and still have gratitude. So yeah, Harriet, she's a winner. Yep, absolutely. Could you tell us a bit about how you curate the selection of books in your bookshop? Uh, So each month we change the collection at least slightly, depending on one, the artist that we're working with for that month. So the artist that we're working with gives us some of her book collection ideas. We think about theme, we think about what books complement her work. And then we also have books that our folks are asking for. So we make sure that we try to meet that. And then, you know, there's also books that I've either read or I want to read, and those will make it into the collection as well. And how did you choose the location of the bookshop? The location of the bookshop was completely like not planned. It was just the matter of the only person who said yes to me. Um, A lot of people were telling me no, that what I was wanting to do didn't make a lot of sense, that I didn't have a track history of success. And so I thought I was going to be, I don't know if y'all from from Philly, but I really wanted to be down the bottom. I used to, you know, I lived down the bottom. I worked down the bottom for many years. Like that was a community where I was out on the street doing a lot of work. And so I thought it made sense to be down there, but that just didn't work out. And this is where I ended up instead, just because she was the only person that said yes. And, you know, I I took the opportunity knowing that Fishtown has a really sordid racial history and tainted racial present and said, I don't I don't care. You know, we'll see what happens with that. One of the headlines that really stuck out to me that Montana read off earlier is that your business is thriving in a pandemic. And you've had such great success with this bookshop, and it opened up only six weeks before COVID hit. And as you were just mentioning, this is actually your first business. You're a writer, first and foremost, and this is your first time really breaking into the business world. So we'd love to hear more about this side and your experience opening up a bookshop. What's been the biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome so far? I mean, all we know are obstacles, right? We've been here through a pandemic. We've been here through rioting. We've been here through folks marching down the street wielding bats. We've been here through the murder of George Floyd and the murder of Breonna Taylor. We've been here through the things that represent the worst of what humanity has to offer. And we've also been here through some of the best that humanity has to offer because there have been days when our business was vulnerable and people stood outside to make sure that our windows didn't get busted. in. There were days when people dropped off water and left it in the front just to make sure that we at least had that. We got a terrible email, right, where a guy or some human or lack thereof, sent us some threatening, like, 
disgusting stuff, right? And we have folks who came and bought flowers. We have folks who just stood here, you know, with me. Like, so, you know, the experience has been really remarkable in that I think just being here, we've gotten to see the best and worst of what humanity has to offer and get to promote that humanity gets to be better than it's been, right? And that there is more for us to do together if we decide that. Yeah, and I think it's incredible because your weapon is not anything in a traditional sense of a weapon. Uh, You're really helping to change the world through books and through the word. And your experience and your background comes from writing. And it would be great if you could talk a little bit about your grad school experience. So where you studied, what you studied, and how all of those learnings helped bring you to where you are today. Yeah, so I'm currently studying at Drexel. I'm getting an MFA at Drexel. This is my second master's degree because I have an addiction to school and really like that environment of learning. And the MFA, I think, is probably the first degree that I actually really, really find valuable because it's giving me direction in something that I'm really, I feel passionate about. And before now, I kind of was shy about whether, you know, are you a writer? You know, it feels like sometimes it's like, you know, are you a fraud? You're not a real writer. You know, I I dated a guy once who was just like, Jenny, you're not a writer. Like, stop saying that. And I was just like, dang, bro, like, that's a that's a harsh thing to sell somebody. He was like, I mean, you know, you're, you're on this writer tip. That's not really who you are. And good for him for telling that truth from his perspective. And good for me for not listening to him because he was wrong. And so, you know, I think that having a community, being a part of a community of writers through Jexel's MFA program has been really important for my growth. And what other things have you done through your writing? Because I know that you write personally. So you yourself have published writing. You're also working on an art installation. But how do you use this before Harriet's and also during Harriet's? How do you use your writing to help folks perhaps in the nonprofit world or startups or corporations? Because you've expanded your network. Like you've done a really good job of not just being the writer who writes a book. You do so much more than that. I think I've tried to go where I saw need. And so wherever I've found that people were in need of support in that area, I've tried to be helpful. And the gift that I bring is writing. And so I've been able to be helpful to nonprofits. Right now, I work for Vote That John. I don't know if y'all heard of that in Philly. And so helping young people to get registered to vote. And that's just one way that I could use the skill that I have to help people socially. I have a column with Philadelphia Stories. So I write about ways in which writing could be used as a social justice tool. You know, so I've been listening to this Toni Morrison YouTube video over and over again recently, where she talks about writers being these sacred beings to our society, just in terms of the folks that can cultivate understanding and can help people bring meaning to chaos. And I think that it's an under-recognized skill in our society and an underutilized skill in our society. I think there are some people who actually are writers who aren't writing, and that is a huge disservice to the rest of us. So in terms of social justice and all the amazing things that Harriet's is doing, what would you like to tell listeners about Harriet's mission? Well, Harriet's mission. Okay, so our mission is to celebrate women authors, women artists, women activists. And I think that for real, for real, our mission is in complete alignment with the mission that Harriet Tubman had, which was to support people with understanding their own ability to reach their own freedom. And self-liberation is possible. And books are a really great tool for that, whether that's because you're listening to the, the voices of folks who came before you or because you are questioning some of your preconceived notions or because you are, you know, educating yourself about a topic that you find to be important. I think that, you know, when I look at my society that I currently live like currently live in, you know, a lot of folks are dealing with some really extreme issues internally and partially that's because we're not reading as much as we used to as a society. And reading has all these health benefits in addition to all of these academic benefits that it offers. And I think that, you know, when we do that, when we read, when we write, we are tapping into some things that that are actually necessary for us and for the folks that are going to come behind us. And just reading a few articles about Harriet's, it seems like your position in the local community has only grown. 
So it'd be awesome to hear more about the bookshop's role in the local Philly community and the Fishtown community. And if you could elaborate on some of the pieces that have been done on how you guys supported the Black Lives Matter protests by handing out books and the different sidewalk sales and conversations that you've been having. Yeah, I mean, I feel the funny thing is I think that Harriet's has given us a space or a location, but we're doing the work that we've been doing for many, many years, which is, you know, I've been an educator since I got here, right? And I've always done that out on the street. I was always like anti-classroom and really like, you know, take the information, take the equipment, take the tools directly to people and stop trying to force people to sit in these classrooms and these boxes in the same way because it's not necessarily good for every learning style or every learning type. And I think Harriet's is just still doing the same thing. Like, I think it's important to take the information to the street. It just doesn't really support us to sit in our silos and not share and not be in dialogue with one another, right? Like, there's a lot of monologue right now. There's a lot of folks, you know, just talking and talking and talking and talking. And there's not a lot of folks that are doing a whole lot of listening and a whole lot of analysis of what somebody else is sharing and a whole lot of like, oh, you know, really thinking about somebody else's perspective and not just your own. Like, that's just, it's becoming faded in our society for, for whatever reason. And I think that by just being intentional about like, let's be intentional about dialogue. Let's be intentional about listening. You don't know it all, right? Like, that's that's an approach that to me has has worked for this little bit of time that we've been able to do it over here at Harriet's. When George Floyd was murdered and Breonna Taylor was murdered by people who we pay through our tax dollars, or some of us pay taxes and some of us do not, that moment in time is a reflection of all of us, right? It's our responsibility to fix this problem. And every time you're looking for somebody else to figure out how to fix it for us, you're looking in the wrong direction. Like there is no representative. There's no there's no president. There's no city council person. There's no there's nobody else that's responsible for coming up with a solution for this. It is our responsibility. And you know, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it's, it's also very powerful when we look at it that way. And one of the solutions that I can offer just by virtue of the position that I have in society is through these books. And so we gave a lot of them away and we continue to give them away when people ask and we'll continue to do that as long as we have the resources to do so. And if you had to pick three books in your shop to recommend right now, which would they be and why? I, do, I never, 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 never do a good job of this. Um, just because it's like, who am I talking to, mm-hmm. right? My audience is going to determine what books I should offer them. Um, you know, are you a, is it a three-year-old child that's coming in with their parent? Is it a, you know, a scholar that's coming in? You know, is it, you know what I mean? It just really depends. And so I try not to give like, a, just like, oh, here's a blanket book for you. You know, I mean, I think everybody should read Harriet's biography because it's good (laughs) and because this is Harriet's and because, you know, she came to Philadelphia because of her, her journey, because she did so by foot, because she did so with, with dogs chasing her and somebody saying that they would pay somebody to kill her. And like that example of doing what's right in the face of all of those odds is really important. But other than that, I don't, I don't do recommendations unless I've had a conversation with the person, unless, you know, somebody's forcing me, which I hope that's not what you're doing. (laughs) <laughs> no, not at all. I think that's awesome to take a, a super curated approach. Yeah, I mean, humans, right? Like everybody needs something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you want a curated recommendation and you want to go and visit Harriet's, where are you located? And then also, how else can our listeners support you in the bookshop? Well, we are located at 258 East Girard Avenue in the Fishtown section of North Philadelphia. And we're also at harrietsbookshop.com. Folks can support us by supporting themselves and making sure that they are reading. And if you aren't getting books here, that's fine. Get books wherever you're getting them. As long as you're setting some time aside for yourself for that, I think that that's going to do wonders for us. And so, yeah, that's what I would say. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> oh, <your> book. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I tell people all the time, like, you know, it's one thing to buy that book and then, you know, it's another thing to read that book. And then, you know, it's another thing to discuss that book and analyze that book. And then the big step is when you're moved to do something as a result of that book out in society, not just like only in your head. And so let's let's see what happens with that. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful message. And Janine, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing this story. Folks, as you heard, if 
If you're in Philly, add Harriet's to your list. And for those that aren't, you can shop books and merch online at harrietsbookshop.com. You can also follow along with Janine and the bookshop on Instagram and find out what else they're doing in the local community. So listen, I really appreciate you all taking the time to ask me questions and to do all this research that y'all did and for having a podcast in general and for being storytellers and being committed to that. I appreciate it. And, you know, I'm saying, I'll say thank you to you on behalf of the future because it's a big deal. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. This is an awesome conversation. All right. Peace, y'all. Take care. Hi, everyone. Jasmine here. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Montana and I want to take a moment to spotlight some other budding podcasts that you should have queued up. First is Human City. The mother who made a community garden, the professor who dedicated his life to parking, the architect who studied the nuances of a public bench. These are the people who make our places, well, human. Listen to the podcast Human City, where your host Stig investigates guests to get to the bottom of what makes our towns, villages, and cities a better place to call home. Through the words of leaders, thinkers, designers, and simply doers, they will figure out how we can make our public great. Search for Human City on any platform you get your podcasts, or give them a follow on Instagram at human.city. Thanks for tuning in. To That Point is created and produced by us, Montana and Jasmine. Big thanks to Levi Barry for the audio engineering and editing. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, leave a review, and follow along on Instagram at to that point. See you soon.